Welcome to the Love Out Loud broadcast from the sweetest place on Sweet Auburn. Wheat Street has always been and always will be one of the centerpieces of Auburn Avenue. We are a church in the heart of Atlanta with Atlanta in our heart. Welcome to Love Out Loud Broadcast. I'm Dr. Ralph Asui Watkins, servant pastor of the Wheat Tree Baptist Church. Today we share with you a sermon entitled, What Do You Do? When you pray for something, you've received it, but you realize you're in the midst of a mess. Let's check out this word from the Wheat Street Baptist Church. Let us pray, God, we thank you once again for the opportunity to come before you. They have the privilege to worship you. You created us for worship. You are worthy of worship. Because God, we know that you have saved us from seen and unseen dangers. And we say thank you. You've blessed us in spite of us. And we say thank you. You've gotten us out of mess that we got ourselves in. And we say, thank you. When we were sick, you healed us, and we say, thank you. In the midst of grief, you have comforted us, and we say, thank you. Uh, We were hungry, and you you fed us, and we say, uh, thank you. Uh, We lost a job, and you helped us find a job, and we say, thank you. God, if we sat here and counted all the ways you have blessed us, we'd be here all of the day long. So suffice it to say, thank you, Lord. Now, God, speak to us through this, your preach word, that it might sustain us, encourage us, give us the fortitude to fight on yet another day with a smile on our face. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. This is the last sermon in the series, What a Difference a Prayer Makes. And today we peek in on Acts chapter, Acts chapter, Acts chapter 21, Acts chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. If you can, please stand out of reverence and respect for God's word. Acts chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. And it reads, it reads like this. After saying goodbye, we sailed straight to Cars. The next day we reached Rhodes, and from there we sailed to Patara. We found a ship going to Phoenicia, so we got on board and, and sailed off. We came within sight of Cyprus and then sailed south on it to the port of Tyre in Syria, where the ship was going to unload its cargo. We looked up the followers and stayed with them for a week. The Holy Spirit told them to warn Paul not to go on to to Jerusalem. But when the week was over, we started on our way again. All the men together with their wives and children walked with us from the town to the seashore. We knelt on the beach and we prayed. Then after saying goodbye to each other, we got onto the ship and they went back home. We set the tire with the Ptolemies and we greeted the followers and stayed with them for a day. The next thing, we went to Caesarea and stayed with Philip, the preacher. He was one of the seven men who helped the apostles. And check this out, he had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. That's that's another sermon. And when he had been in Caesarea for several days, when the prophet Agabus came to us from Judea, he took Paul's belt, and with it he tied up his own hands and feet. Then he told us, the Holy Spirit says, that some of the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem will tie up the man who owns the belt. They will also hand him over to the Gentiles. After Agabus said this, he, we and all the followers living there begged Paul not to go to Jerusalem. But Paul answered, why are you crying and breaking my heart? I'm not only willing to be put in jail for the Lord Jesus. I'm even willing to die for him in Jerusalem since we could not get Paul to change his mind. We gave up and prayed. Lord, please make us willing to do 
what you want us to do. You may take your seats in the honor and presence of God. Which way now? What do you do when you've prayed yourself into a mess? Which way now? What do you do when you've prayed yourself into a mess? Whether you know it or not, this is a, a mess. The Apostle Paul and his boys are in a, in a mess. In the words of Wiz Khalifa, hold up, hold up, we them boys, hold up, hold up, we them boys, hold up, hold up, we them boys, and we making some noise. Paul and Philip and the apostles are making noise. They are, they, 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 they are, they are making noise, and this noise has got them into a mess. The church is growing, thousands are being saved, miracles are being worked, people are being healed, people are being set free, but Paul and then Boaz are in a mess. The church is under attack. The leaders of the church are being persecuted one by one. And the funny thing about this is they are doing what God has called them to do. They are doing what they have prayed for the strength to do, but now it has become a mess because they're constantly under attack. Looks like they are about to get tied up, locked up, and maybe killed. Have you ever prayed for something? Got what you prayed for? And then after getting what you prayed for, it wasn't what you thought it was all going to be. Help me hold it, I feel like preaching this morning. I mean, you prayed for it, and you dreamt of it, and you saw it one way. But after you got what you prayed for, you found it wasn't like you dreamt about it. Help me, Holy Ghost, I feel like preaching this morning. It was more complicated and more complex than you thought. It came along with problems you didn't anticipate. It was messier than it looked like as you, when you daydream. I mean, when you pray for something, you pray for it and you see it perfectly. But then when you get it, it's imperfect. Well, y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Let me come and knock on your door. How many of y'all stood in front of the altar? Stood in front of the preacher and said for rich or poor, for good days and bad days, for bare and all for worse. But on that day, you saw Mary like a rose-colored glass. Then you messed around, got married, bought a house, moved in the house, and all oh, hell broke loose. Help me, hold it. I feel like preaching. How many of y'all had children? And you said, my children going to be the best children in the world. I'm not going to make the mistakes my mama and daddy made. I'm going to be a better mama and daddy than my mama and daddy was. Then about 13 years later, when them children became teenagers, you was calling on mom and daddy to pray for you. Help me, Holy because I feel like preaching. See, when we pray for something, we see it through rose-colored glasses. When we pray and ask God to give us more, to enlarge our territory, we sometimes don't see what comes along with God answering our prayers. The, 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 the text says at the, at the saying goodbye, we, we sail straight to cars. The next day we, we reach roads and, 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 and we sail to, to, to Patra. Um, the, 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 then the Bible says we, we, we came to the site of Cyprus and then sailed south in onto the port of Tyre in Syria where the ship was going to be unload its cargo. We looked up the Lord's followers and stayed with them for a week. The Holy Spirit had told one of them to warn Paul not to go on to Jerusalem. On. The people say that the Holy Spirit had told them to tell Paul not to go to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Now these folks claim that the Holy Spirit told them to warn Paul not to go to Jerusalem. What was Paul to do? We have to ask two questions here. Number one, what do you do? When do you listen to folk who claim that God told them to tell you something? Well. How do you confirm or dismiss what they say God told them to tell you? I tell folks sometimes, Darren, if God told you to tell me, tell God to tell me himself. Hello, somebody. But let me say parenthetically, uh, you can't listen to what everybody tells you God told them to tell you. 
Just because someone calls themselves a prophet don't mean they are a prophet. Everybody who says they have a word from God for you don't mean they have a word of God for you. You have to know who to listen to and when to listen to them and when to shut them down. See, there, there, there are a lot of false prophets and, and false preachers and, and false teachers running around telling you they got a word from the Lord for you. But the text says, we looked up the Lord's followers and stayed with them for a week. The Holy Spirit told one of them to warn Paul not to go to Jerusalem. But when the week was over, we started on our way again. All the men, together with their wives and children, walked with us to the town of the seashore. Don't miss this. We knelt on the beach and prayed for ourselves. Right. See, there's no record in the text that Paul said anything to the folk who claim to have a word from God for him. See, you don't have to answer those folk who claim to have a word from God for you. What the text says is they stayed there a week, and it when it was time to leave, they got down on their knees and they prayed. After they got up off their knees, Paul is on his way. Paul hasn't defended his decision to anybody. See, sometimes when you tell folk what God told you, they think you're asking them for the advice. You have to tell folks sometimes when God told you to tell them what God told you, tell them this is not for your advice or for your scrutiny. This is FYI. They stayed a week. They prayed and then they left. Paul has to make his mind up to move on. Paul has heard from God because Paul was talking to God. As Paul and his team prepare to get on the boat, as they prepare to leave this town, they don't ask for advice from those who've already told them where not to go. Paul and them boys, they pray, they say goodbye, and then they get on the boat. The text says, but when the week was over, we started on our way again. All the men and women, together with their wives and children, walked with us from, from the town to the seashore. We knelt on the beach and we prayed. Then after saying goodbye to each other, we got into the ship and they went back home. We sailed to Tyra, the Ptolemies, where we greeted the followers and stayed with them for just one day. The next day we went to Caesarea, stayed with Philip, the preacher. He, has, he was one of the seven men who helped the apostles and he had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. That's, a, that's another sermon. Uh, we had been in Caesarea for several days when the prophet Agabus came up from Judea. He took Paul's belt with it and tied up his own hands and feet. And then he told us, the Holy Spirit says that some of the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem will tie up the man who owns this belt. Yes. They will also hand him over to the Gentiles. Come on. Lord have mercy. What is Paul to do? He was told by the people at Tyre not to go to Jerusalem. Well. He gets to Caesarea on his way to Jerusalem. And the prophet Agabus comes from Judea and tells him, if you go to Jerusalem, they are going to tie you up. If you go to Jerusalem, they are going to lock you up. If you go to Jerusalem, you and them boys could lose your life. Agabus, the prophet, claimed that the Holy Spirit told him to basically tell Paul not to go. See, Paul has prayed before he got there. Paul has prayed to be here. Paul has sought the Lord, and the Lord has sent him to Jerusalem. On, the Lord has sent Paul and Philip, and yes, these boys, God, God has sent them, and now a prophet claiming to be from God is telling him not to go where God told him to go. What is Paul and them boys going to do? The text says right there, we have been in Caesarea for several days, and the prophet Agabus came up from Judea. He took Paul's belt, and with it he tied up his own hands, and then he tied up his feet and told us, the Holy Spirit says that some of the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem will tie you up, tie up the man who owns this belt. They will also hand him over to the Gentiles. Yes, yes. After Agabus said this, we and the followers living there begged Paul Come on. not to go to Jerusalem. Mm. But Paul looked him straight in the face yes. 
didn't back down, didn't bat an eye, didn't, you see, he looked them straight in the face. And Paul said, why are you crying and breaking my heart? I'm not only willing to be put in jail for the Lord Jesus, I'm even willing to die for him in Jerusalem. And then they say, since we could not change Paul's mind, we gave up and prayed, Lord, please make us willing to do what you need us to do. Get the scene, folk are crying. Them boys, they, they crying. All these prophets have come to tell Paul where not to go. They've come to tell Paul what they claim the Holy Spirit told them to tell Paul. But Paul has a word for them. Now it's time for Paul to speak up and for them to listen. Paul says in verse 13, why are you crying and breaking my heart? I'm not only willing to be put in jail for the Lord Jesus, I'm even willing to die for him in Jerusalem. Paul is saying, while y'all scared, what you, what you scared of? We pray for this. We pray for Jesus to go back to glory. We pray that God would use us to start and grow God's church. God has answered our prayer. Yes. We called on God for this, and now that God's blessed us with an answer to our prayer, how y'all going to be scared now? Paul is saying, we prayed and asked God for this assignment. We accepted the assignment. And now when trouble comes, now y'all going to get scared up in here, up in here. See, while you are telling me what not to do, Paul says, this is what God is calling us to do. And, what it, and God is saying to us, it's going to cost us something to do what God called us to do. Paul says, but you don't understand that not only did I pray for this, but I have prayed through this. Yes. See, when you get what you pray for, it don't mean it's going to be easy. When you get what you pray for, it don't mean that everybody who started with you going to stay with you. When you get what you pray for, it don't mean that folk will not sometimes second guess what God told you to do. When you get what you pray for, there's going to be some times where it's going to get messy and confusing. When you get what you pray for and you hit hard times, the tendency is for us to question if this is what God wanted us to do. When you get what you pray for and you hit hard times, we sometimes question if we even heard from God in the first place. We start to wonder if we made a mistake. What we see in this text though is Paul knew what he had prayed for. Paul knew what Paul was called to do. When you know what God has called you to do, when you know what God created you for, don't let no devil in hell shake your confidence. Don't let no doubting Thomas shake you because God deposited something in you. You have to know that you know that God called you to do this thing. Yeah, but hold on, I feel like pitching up in here. I don't want to take all your time, but we eat barbecue tomorrow, not today. But Paul, 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 there's no hint in the text that, that Paul listened to the folk who were trying to turn him around. There's no hint in the text that Paul ever thought about turning around or second guessing his decision. I believe that Paul was praying the entire time. I believe that Paul knew that God answers prayer in the midst of your struggle. Yes. See, God had turned Paul from the one who was persecuting the church to the one who was leading the church. Paul was sure because Paul knew that he had to pray through what he was going through to get the promise of the breakthrough. Let me say that one more time. See, when you get what you pray for, you got to pray through what you got to go through to get to the promise of your breakthrough. So you have to pray for what you want 
and then when God answers your prayer, you must pray for the stamina, the strength, the intestinal fortitude, the fight, the battles you're going to fight in the midst of your blessing. See, blessings come with struggles. Blessings come with oppositions. Blessings come with folk who won't shout with you. And in the midst of inhabiting your blessing, you must pray for God to give you the strength to hold on a little while longer. You got to pray when you get what God promised you. You can't stop praying once you got the blessing. You have to pray for strength to get through what you got to go through to hold on to what God blessed you with. Help me, Holy Ghost, I feel like preaching. It ain't going to be easy. This is our misconception. We think when God answers our prayer, everything is going to be all right. And when hard times come, and when well-meaning folk, folk who think they've heard from the Holy Ghost, tell you to turn around, what do you do? In times like these, we have to confess and believe what we prayed for. We have to confess and believe that the God who brought us here is the same God that will keep us here. We must confess and believe the God that blessed us will ensure we don't lose the blessing. We must pray and believe the God that got us here will sustain us through what we're going through. You see, Paul was, Paul was clear. Paul said, don't, 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 don't miss this. Paul said that once you pray for a thing, you got to keep on praying. You got to make your mind up. You have to have a made up mind. God can't use no wishy-washy Christian. You can't be wavering back and forth. God needs Christians who are committed to doing God's work no matter what obstacles come in their way. Look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at verse 13 one more time. Just one more time. But Paul answered, why are you crying and breaking my heart? I'm not only willing to be put in jail for the Lord Jesus. I'm even willing to die for him in Jerusalem. See, Paul has made his mind up. Paul was clear. Paul said, I'm so committed to this thing, I'm willing to go to jail. Paul said, I'm so committed to this thing, I'm willing to die. Paul knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, this was what God had called him to do. God had called his disciples to go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the world. Paul had to go to Jerusalem. Yes. Paul had a made up mind. And I'm standing here this morning, and I'm saying to you, make your mind up. Whatever God has called you to do, whoever God has called you to serve, wherever God has called you to go, don't let the weather report affect your faith. It may be cloudy sometimes. It may be cold sometimes. It may be windy sometimes. Conditions may be hazardous sometimes. But don't let the weather conditions challenge your faith. Folk may look at you funny sometimes. Folk may call you crazy sometimes. Folk may talk about you sometimes. Folk may understand you sometimes. But you hold on to your faith and do what God has called you to do. Because a Christian with a made up mind, a Christian with a mind that's so made up that no devil in hell can turn them around. It's a witness of folk who don't have faith. Make your mind up. If God calls you to it, God can get you through it. You better make your mind up. Ain't nobody going to turn me around. You better make your mind up that no weapon formed against you will prosper. The old folk put it this way. I woke up this morning, my mind stayed on freedom. And I ain't let nobody turn me around. John P. Key, John P. Key put it like this. Since I met the Lord, my mind is made up to go with Jesus all the way. I'm on the right track. There is no turning back. Nobody can hold me. Nobody can mold me. Nobody can show me like you, Jesus. I tried so many things in my life, and I'm so satisfied. I'll never turn my back on God. I'm so satisfied. We are the church in the heart of Atlanta with Atlanta in our heart. 
We love this city. And this is what love looks like. It looks like our partnership with Hope Through Soap. We provide showers and grooming needs for the most vulnerable in the city. And this month we partner with the Atlanta Hawks. We do this twice a month. So if you watch it and you move, go to our website and volunteer to serve with us through Hope Through Soap twice a month here at Wheat Street Baptist Church. This is what love looks like. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our pastor for young adults and social engagement, Pastor Vincent Jones. Listen to what he has to say. Hello, family. Uh, this is Hope Through Soap, and they're just coming out giving showers. They're giving toiletry items. They've cooked a lot of food, and they're just here to help. And it's important because this is what we are called to do. Uh, Hope Through Soap is here. Uh, the Atlanta Hawks are here. We also have a real estate company here. We have a Girl Scout troop uh, that's here that's donated some toiletry items. Uh, we have a, a Radiant Church. They're all the way here from Dayton, Ohio. I'm Trina pitts -Brun. I'm one of the deacons here at Wheat Street Baptist Church. Today we are partnering again with Hope Through Soap. And one of the greatest joys of partnering with Hope Through Soap is to allow the people that are homeless to come in to get a shower and to fellowship with them and to feed them and let them know that God loves them. Today we have the Atlanta Hawks and their team and the administration staff that's here partnering with us. We have a DJ here and we're just having fun to let them know we are all of God's children and we love them. I think anytime you know you have a role in a community, anytime you're a part of leadership in a community, uh, it's important to provide others that don't have the same opportunities that we have. As a head coach, as part of the Atlanta Hawks organization, we're privileged and we're in a position where we can help, and so it's our role and it's our responsibility to do so. So we hope you've seen what we're trying to do here. We're trying to make a difference in this city. Love is an action word. So when we say we are the church in the heart of Atlanta, with Atlanta in our heart, we take our faith seriously. We try to preach a word that's relevant and empowering, that speaks to real life circumstances, and we ensure we serve the most vulnerable. That's what God's called us to do. And if you want to be a part of a movement that's doing that type of real work, that's making a real difference in the world, then come join us here at the Wheat Street Baptist Church. Do me a favor, visit our website at wearewheatstreet.org and see what God's doing through this church. We want you to be a part of this movement. I'm Dr. Ralph Basui Watkins. I hope to see you real soon.